Welcome to Kid Missing TV. I'm your host, Angelina Wilson. Today we're going to discuss the case of Mary Anderson. This wasn't her real name. She checked into the Hotel Vintage Park on October 9th, 1996, and was found deceased in her room on October 11th, when she did not check out. She paid for two rooms. Uh, yeah, two rooms, two nights <laughs> at the hotel at a cost of between $280 and $350 an evening. Um, I don't know which it is because no one's been specific about that. She was 5 feet 8 inches tall, which is tall for a woman. She weighed 240 pounds. This woman was pretty obese. Um, no judgments, just that. Um, she also had a scar under each breast, which indicates to most people that I've read, and to me, that she had a breast reduction surgery. Um, that's not unusual when you're obese, to have your breasts so heavy they hurt your back. Um, because remember, a lot of breast fat. But some people who aren't obese get very large and have to have them made smaller. So, um, again, this was in Seattle, Washington. She gave a New York address. She obviously knew New York City, had been there, had maybe lived there at some point. Um, she gave an address that, in my research, led to an area where there's something called the Tenement Museum. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, and that's, and the zip code and address didn't match. Um, the phone number that she gave didn't match. Phone number came from a different borough. <laughs> so, you know, it's one thing to get the 212 for New York City right, the area code. Um, the zip code, a little harder to get right unless you know it. And the exchange, almost impossible. Excuse me, if you don't know it. Now I know some of you kids are scratching your heads. What's an exchange? That's the three digits that appear after the area code. <laughs> um, that tells you what city or town the call is from. Those of you young kids. <laughs> um, she died of poisoning from cyanide. Now they don't say whether it's potassium cyanide or sodium cyanide. Most likely it's potassium cyanide because that seems to be, <laughs> researching this line of work, um, what people use when they want people gone quicker. Um, not so much sodium cyanide. Potassium cyanide seems to be more available. Um, and I will get into a couple of theories. Uh, I'll let you know what I think of those theories in a moment. First, they say that she put the cyanide in Metamucil. Well, in the description of all of her belongings, nowhere does it say there was a bottle of Metamucil. So, where the heck did that come from? She did have a bottle of crystal light drink mix, and it could have been in that, and that would have left a residue on the glass as described. Um, so that's possible. I'm assuming that they did some sort of chemical analysis on this drink. I'm wondering if somebody put it in there beforehand and she didn't know it. This woman had a bowl, a kitchen bowl. I don't know if it's a mixing bowl, salad bowl, a soup bowl, what it was, but it must have been something to her, with her. Along with two suitcases loaded with clothes, mostly velour, <laughs> which was an 80s thing. I loved my velour sweater in the 80s. Um, <laughs> but they were pricey clothes. They came from Nordstrom. If you know anything about Nordstrom, you know it's an expensive store. 
I know people who shop there. I do not. I have never stepped foot in an art store. <laughs> um, the room that she was in, by the way, was 214. And some people wondered if that room had special meaning to her until someone pointed out that she did not ask for a specific room. They gave her that room. So that rules that out. Um, the Hotel Vintage Park is owned by a hotelier that owns at least two other hotels. He liked the historical aspect of the area and of the buildings. Um, he bought it not long before this all happened. That's why that's relevant. Um, she had a Bible laying on her, which I find interesting because in my research on how you die from cyanide, it says seizures and it sounds pretty horrible. Um, you know, some people will say it's peaceful death. <coughs> Not so sure about that. Um, so, if that's the case, how was she laying there, almost posed, with a Bible on her? Um, the only way to describe her positioning, her posing, she was in a state of repose. You know, a state of calm state of freedom and heaven and whatever to me excuse my phone <laughs> to me that says she was staged that way now they will say well the door was locked yep could have been locked on the person's way out and it's a hotel room door so it will lock on your way out so that means nothing if you've ever stayed in a hotel or motel, you know that once you exit that room, you better have your key or today your key card or you can get back in because you're going to walk. Um, the only way it would be different is if the little bar or the chain, whatever that hotel used for the extra lock, was locked. Um, People don't use those very often. Um, I stayed at Boxwoods and I actually used the little bar when I was in the bathtub. But I can't think of any other reason you'd use the little bar or the little chain. This one probably had a chain because it's an old bar. Um, and like I said, it um, didn't say that it was closed and she couldn't have Nobody could have gotten in if the chain was put up. So the fact that the door was locked, like I said, means nothing. It's a hotel. Um, like I said, she would have had seizures. She wouldn't have been lying in this peaceful state of repose. You know, which, again, you see in the pictures. Um, she wrote a note, if you believe it was a note from her. Um, so she had no family, don't try to find out who she was, just leave her alone. And she left 50, a $50 bill. Um, it just seemed a little, too, as I said, staged for my liking. Um, police evidently don't feel that way. Um, In her post-mortem pictures, I also noticed that she had a rash on her elbow. And I will include that picture as well, where you can see this rash. It almost looks like, because the Lord knows I have plenty of it, psoriasis. Like in the process between, like when it was starting to clear up a little bit. Like she had had an, a flare up and it had started to clear up a little bit. I actually have, I will show you my elbow. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but that's kind of what it looks like. Like I said, I don't know how well the camera will pick that up. Um, that's what I was thinking that it was. Nobody has mentioned this. She had dyed hair that was sort of a red color. Um, 
<laughs> I wonder if they found fingerprints um, on the Bible, glass, her suitcase, anything. Did her suitcases have any, um, well, she probably didn't leave the tag that says who you are, your name and address and all that stuff, but did they have um, tags from airports, like, like a tag from an airport? Um, I don't know how to explain that. It's a, uh, I've never flown, but I've seen them. It's a tag that they twist around the handle and put through and it has the letters that make up the airport. Like if you were coming out of Los Angeles, it'd say LAX, something like that. Um, they all have their own code. She had her eyebrows plucked. Um, she wore nail polish. She had a manicure with like a cream colored nail polish. Um, she had a dental plate. In other words, um, she had a, a denture in one. Um, either top or bottom, I don't know if there's a difference in what they call them, but she had a plate. That might mean top. Again, I'm not sure. You can tell me in the comments. Um, she had an iron with her. Um, who irons the floor? She was laying on what appeared to be her own pillows, but if you look at these pillows, they look like pillows you'd put on a couch. Like they have that rough textured embroidered sort of exterior to them like they were couch pillows not bed pillows maybe they were but they were throw pillows they weren't the pillows you sleep on typically um there was a newspaper open on the desk of the hotel room and it had it was the local paper it had three maple leaves laying on one of the pages a lot of people have said, oh, could she have been Canadian because there were three maple leaves? I suppose that's a possibility. I mean, that's not so far from Canada. But you would think that someone would have noticed um, an accent, possibly, um, and they didn't. The hotel refuses to be a part of talking to anyone about the case. Journalists, um, anybody because they don't want to be associated with the death so they try to play off like she did not die there um, that's suspicious just a little bit um, the chief investigator for the medical examiner's office is a man named Jerry Webster he has not given up on this case um, and I want to give you the telephone number to the King County Medical Examiner's Office. Um, it is 1 206 625 5011. 1 206 625 5011. Um, I know that there is a lady at that medical examiner's office who actually just did. Um, a podcast on this case that I would sure love to talk to her online. Um, the only other thing was there were 200 leads. About a dozen were potentially good leads and they led to nowhere. Which is so frustrating. This poor lady deserves her children. Her. Um, oh, the only other clue that they found was that she had a copper IUD. Now, people online were saying, oh, Paragard. Um, Paragard didn't exist then. We're talking about 1996. Most IUDs then, well, probably all of them then, were, in fact, copper because they weren't stuck with hormones like most of the IUDs today. Um, As I was saying, <coughs> no.
Mary. I do have had someone, something, um, maybe something she was hiding from. I'm not sure. Either way, she deserves a name. And not the one that she gave herself for whatever reason. It would be interesting to see if, if that me name meant anything to her. Um, and I just wanted to tell you there's another case that I will be doing not Thursday, next Tuesday. Uh, the case of the Annandale Jane Doe or the Christmas tree lady. She was a woman who took her own life in a cemetery. Um, she's very similar to this lady. There are many similarities and I, I just have a feeling that the case is somehow related. So we're going to talk about that. But next time we're going to talk about the case of Tammy Belanger from Exeter, New Hampshire. She's a missing child. And this was specially requested by my high school friend, Erica Keown Hamilton. Thank you for your request, Erica. And if you have requests for um, cases you'd like to see me um, do shows on, focus on, you can write it in the comments. Um, come over to my Facebook. Even if you're not my friend, you can send me a message and I'll still see it because I know where to go to see uh, messages from my friends. Um, and being on an iPad, it shows. There's a number up there to show you that you have messages. So please do that. Please like, please subscribe, please share my videos. The more eyes on these cases, the better. Thank you so much. I've got the best. Ask up there, mate.